Hello, I'm Amy Ha, an undergrad in marketing and information systems. I am in Team Female Leaders with Danica Borchik, an MBA program, Casey Grossman, an MBA program, Nick Tagesen, an undergrad in finance and operations, and Daisy Shong, an undergrad in pre-med and operations and supply chain major. First of all, we would like to say thank you for this amazing opportunity for us to join the initiative to help improve female presence in Utah office. Let's address the problem statement. How can real women run increase the number of diverse women running for Utah public office? We decided to focus on real women runs recruitment of young women to run for public office and participate in civic engagements. We focused on young women attending college, specifically between the ages of 18 to 35, for three reasons. The first one is based on your feedback, research of the provided materials and over 60 responses from a survey that we created. We know that Real Women Run has not been able to create sustained engagement with this demographic. Only 78% of our survey respondents between the ages of 18 to 24 said that they had never heard of Real Women Run before, and 22% of them said that they had heard of Real Women Run but had never engaged with them. The second reason is that Real Women Run has several existing capabilities and relationships with universities in Utah that can be leveraged to create impactful outreach initiatives to this demographic. And the third reason is that college is a time of exploration, academically, professionally, and socially. It's critical that real women run intervention happens during these important years when young women are deciding who they want to be. Politics and civic engagement should be in the forefront of their minds as a viable option for their future. Now I'm gonna pass it on to Danica for recommendations. Thanks, Amy. Based on our analysis, we would like to present two recommendations. The first is to create RWR university chapters. The second is to leverage membership within these chapters to establish a mentorship program and increase active candidate recruitment efforts for current students and recent graduates. We suggest piloting these efforts at the University of Utah, since RWR already has strong existing ties with the Hinckley Institute, the business school, and others. This program can then be duplicated on other campuses in Utah, as most schools have the existing infrastructure to house the programs we will suggest throughout this presentation. We recommend that RWR implement student-led, board member advised, university chapters that will empower young women to run by providing them with experiential learning, informing them about how to run for office, and helping them build support networks. By cultivating these positive associations with the future in politics during their university experience, we anticipate an increase in the number of young women running for office in years to come. The barriers for RWR to enter this space are low, as these institutions typically have mechanisms in place to house and manage student groups, as well as pools of untapped potential and interest within existing campus organizations. For example, the University of Utah has a robust elected student government, of which the Senate currently has a female majority, by the way. These students already have experience running successful campaigns in order to get these positions and therefore would be ideal potential recruits for the first RWR chapter at the U. Outside of the official student government, there are also 25 political and civil engagement clubs. However, only two of these groups have any focus on women or women's issues. While it's great that these groups exist, they do not directly address the need for women-focused student organizations that inform and encourage young female leaders who are serious about getting involved in politics. RWR has a huge opportunity to fill this gap and provide a much needed space for female students to talk about what changes they want to see happen in Utah politics and learn how to make those changes happen. As Amy mentioned, this is a demographic you haven't fully been able to reach yet. Many students are looking for ways to network, add to their resumes and work on issues that they are passionate about. If RWR can meet these students where they're at, namely on their campus within an approachable environment of fellow students, you will create a space that brings the diverse perspective of young women to RWR and creates a pipeline of future potential candidates. I'll now turn the time over to Daisy to talk through some implementation steps. Thank you, Danica. We envision the implementation of this recommendation happening in four steps. First, RWR will create a university chapter with universities like the University of Utah. 
RWR can contact ASU Youth Student Government, the Hinckley Institute, and other relevant student organizations to recruit its female leaders as members of this chapter, which will only need three members to form. This is a feasible approach because universities offer funding to its student organizations, and most female leaders already have more interest and experience in running for student positions compared to the average student body. Next, the RWR chapter will engage the community with programming, such as informal mentor sessions and informative practice interviews. This will establish relationships with the population of future leaders by offering experience and advice. Third, RWR will further its investment into this group of providing scholarships. Many students apply for unpaid internships to gain experience, but this can be too, also too big of a financial burden. For the sake of offering more accessible opportunities, RWR can provide scholarships to support these students in their endeavors and activities, thus increasing diversity. Finally, once the first chapter is stable, RWR can expand this model to other Utah universities and colleges, expanding its reach. Next, we will turn to Casey on our second recommendation. Thank you, Daisy. It's not enough to just teach students how or why they should run for office. Active recruiting and coaching needs to continue throughout their university experience and through post-graduation. A McKinsey report found that men are often hired or promoted based on their potential, while women are hired for their experience and track record. This means women need mentors and people who will root for them within their organizations. In order to address this, a recent report by the Utah Women in Leadership Project recommend that women gain the skills they feel they need to run for office through mentorship and or sponsorship. In our own survey of 65 female identifying subjects, 63% of respondents said having a female mentor in politics or government would be the most motivating factor for them to run. In our neighboring states of Nevada and Colorado, where they have the highest female representation in the US, there are programs which show great success within this approach. Programs such as Emerge, an organization which recruits, trains, and provides a network of female Democratic women who want to run for office, offers an in-depth six-month, 70-hour training program which focuses on continued development and networking with for potential office candidates. Emerge saw a 71% success rate in Nevada and in Colorado of the 25 alumni who won office, 34% were women of color. As with any product or service, it's important to increase engagement through increased touch points. By creating online communities through options like LinkedIn groups, you can increase your touch points by increasing interactions and ensure messaging is targeted. Second, creating special graduation events each year where members can connect with local leaders will help them break down the perceived barriers to elected women and encourage involvement in mentor programs. Additionally, resources should also be provided at these events where members can learn about internship opportunities, current open positions in public service, as well as receive advice and feedback on resumes and interviewing skills. Finally, while building up women's confidence and interest in running, it's important to affirm that they should run as you are because women are most likely to reject opportunities which they don't feel 100% qualified for. Messaging should focus on their ideas and solutions for problems while also giving them the benefit of mentor experience and the endorsement of the Real Women Run peers. Now over to Nick. Thanks, Stacey. So now I'm going to address the risks and challenges we see RWR facing while trying to implement our recommendations. So with the campus chapters, helping advise a campus chapter of RWR will take some work. Since RWR board members are already stretched very thin, we think it'd be wise that you consider adding one or two campus outreach positions to your board to head up these efforts. However, this is a great position that recent graduates could fill as well once they have finished going through the chapter themselves. Our second risk we see coming from funding both the chapters and our other recommendations. Specifically for the chapters, we recommend taking advantage of on-campus funding options, such as ASUU at the University of Utah, which can be used to fund events, swag, and travel, and can even be used to fund magazine subscriptions for interested members of the organization. Additionally, we recommend taking advantage of the community reinvestment. The CRA, as it's called, is a way for the banks are required to reinvest into their communities, which often takes place where there's underrepresented populations, such as women in politics. We think this is something worth looking into more. So now I'm going to run through the summary of what we think our impact will be and 
How does it help shape the future of women in politics in Utah? So when we look just at our target market, which is the University of Utah, we see there are over 33,000 enrolled students. Of this, 47% are female in, in 2020. About 24% of college-aged women are interested in politics. This gives us a target audience at the U of about 4,000 potential members for this chapter. If we assume just 5% of these members join, we have about 150 members for the student organization. When we look at this for the entire state of Utah, we can see there are up to 190,000 college students in Utah, of which over half are female. In fact, 56% of US college students are women. When factoring that to Utah, that equals over 100,000 female students. We believe these chapters will give more opportunities to women in universities in Utah, which are interested in politics. We think this will increase the amount of women that are exposed to politics at college campuses. We anticipate that with an RWR chapter and active recruiting slash our mentorship recommendation, that we can increase the number of women running for politics. In 2020, that number was 208 women running for office. We think that this number can easily rise 30% year over year, just based off of our recommendations alone. We would like to thank Real Women Run, the Goff Strategic Leadership Center, the Hinckley Institute of Politics, and everyone else who contributed to making this case competition a reality. We were very thrilled to come up with these recommendations for you, and we hope that they will be part of your considerations as you think about moving forward with Real Women Run's initiative to reach out to diverse women in Utah. Thank you so much, and we hope to be hearing from you soon.